So we're going to start here with the Tyranid faction, of course, and I'm just going to go on the standard random maps that I do. I've got six AI that I'm facing, and I'm going to be playing as the Tyranids right here. Now, this is currently a beta copy, so it's set on very hard, and Sir Tur, if you think I should keep it there, I will. Uh, but I think I'm going to put this to medium, uh, or hard, I should say. Let's do hard right now. We're going to keep the AI at random, specifically and primarily because I like to kind of like find out what's coming up, uh, and I like to be surprised. So hopefully we'll be surprised by what we see here. Without further ado, guys, we are going to go ahead and take a look at the Tyranid faction. This is the intro to the Tyranids, and then we will get started on the brutal world of Gladius Prime. In its isolation, Gladius Prime was an ideal research location. Here, the Adeptus Mechanicus Majus Biologus analyzed one of the greatest threats to the Imperium. The Tyranids. The defeat of High Fleet Kraken at Fagundia showed that science could defeat the horrors. The colony. Guard Outpost and Space Marine Chapter were unwitting insurance. Defenses, in case the Tyranids ever escaped. When the day came, they weren't enough. Nothing was enough. Well, here we go, a brand new uh, version and start, I should say, here in Gladius Prime. Now, we've got these beautiful little termagants, guys. Uh, for those of you familiar with the termagants, uh, of course, and I just recently learned this. I knew very little about the actual um, Tyranids uh, before uh, Bart here informed me of quite a lot. And these termagants do have these sort of rifles, but this is all, uh, you know, biomass-related stuff, man. This is all, you know, their own bodies, their own organs creating these weapons. Uh, and this is definitely one of those factions that is absolutely based off a hive mind. So, you know, essentially, the thing that's most important is going to be where we actually start uh, building our colony, or whatever you want to call it, uh, with the Malanthrope. And the Malanthrope here, this sickly worm-like creature, is going to go ahead and found our first city. So I'm going to pop our first city right here. Um, and the first city will be the Hypoplomex. Uh, first thing I want to do is go ahead and acquire a tile. Uh, like many alien species, you know, what this thing does is essentially slowly reach out and leach biomass from the areas. As you can see here, we're actually getting that biomass uh, signature there, uh, the little green sort of uh, DNA structure. Now, this area looks really good, so I'm going for this one, the Grox Pasture. Uh, and I'm assuming that taking over the Grox there is probably going to increase our biomass as well. Now, the next thing we want to go for is research. Uh, the Hormigants are the basic close combat infantry unit. Currently, the actual uh, units that we're using use uh, sort of missile-based weapons. We also have the Gargoyles. This is a jump infantry unit, and they're actually pretty good at taking things on like robots. I mean, they are vicious units. You know, this might be just all biomass, but they've got some incredible appendages, uh, blades, you know, bone blades on their body that can just rip through things. Uh, we also have Savage Apprescence, and this reduces the influence of overriding instinctive behavior. And that's an important thing about the Tyranids. What essentially happens, the farther we get from our base, the farther we get from the hive mind, the less morale these guys have, you know, the less ability in combat they have. They're just not as strong without that hive mind controlling them. But I think the first thing that we are going to do, guys, is get the Alpha of Appository. Uh, the egg lane chamber of the heroes. It also generates biomass uh, and it also increases loyalty uh, for our units, which I think is going to be something pretty important here if we're playing as the Tyranids. All right, let's go ahead in that turn. I'm already going to go straight for these units here. Uh, now, I should mention that the actual Tyranids themselves have very, very high uh, attack values, but they don't necessarily have very high defensive values. 
you want to be aggressive with these guys, maybe even more so than with the Orcs. Um, and I should say, if you like playing Orcs, you're probably going to like playing Tyranids as well. To Magos Xenologus Lexidium, report concerning Divisio Biologis operations on Gladius Prime. With the Astra Militarum as Tech Priest Liaison to investigate the Circle Varnak facility on Gladius Prime, that is, the successful experiments which had resulted in victory at Facundia. When the storm stabilized, the planet was cut off. Fearing the worst, I made my way to the Janetter facility, but found it an empty ruin. With no trace of servitors or tech priests, I returned empty handed to the surviving Imperial forces. Soon, reports came in monsters, horrors, tyranids. But the creatures were not coordinated swarms, they were isolated, running wild. Easy prey for neophyte marines or veteran guardsmen. I dared to hope we could eliminate them quickly. That was very short lived. Knowing what I know now, the hive mind focused on the creation of mighty synapse creatures, the warriors, tyrants, and primes. So guys, our objectives are to research and construct the alpha oppository and to purchase, or produce I should say, the Tyranid Prime. Uh, one of the hero units here of the Tyranids, and really just an alpha Tyranid unit. So I'm going to move these guys in, I'm going to be aggressive. Let's go for it guys with the Termigans. Yeah, for sure. Let's go ahead and take a look at those units. And a good idea, too, because this is just beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and pop over here and begin the attack. Of course, we want these guys close to each other for the same reason you want any units close to one another, uh, so that we gain experience throughout, essentially. And it looks like we're having no issues here with these crude hounds. So I'm just going to get everybody into position. I don't like having a castle and robot that close, uh, but hopefully it won't be too much of a problem. There we go. And let's see how we deal with these crude hounds. Beautiful. Should be able to gain some experience there. It begins. Let's go back to the uh, Hypoflomex. And we still have to uh, do a few things here. Now, this is interesting. This is a synapse creature. Um, and grant this adjacent enemy's immunity to morale, fear, and instinctive behavior effects. Uh, this is, of course, a hive mind ability. So essentially, uh, even if we're pretty far, we can maybe give that boost and they can kind of stray away a little bit, still work out pretty well. And one thing I don't want to run into is that Castle and Robot. I hope we can just boost the XP of these guys by continuing to attack these Crude Hounds here. All right, the Robot's going away. Good idea, Robot. Very good idea. I'm in favor as well. So as you can see, those Termigants, uh, even you know with Crude Hounds attacking them, they're, they're getting hit pretty hard here. You know, uh, th These are not... It's not a strong defensive faction. This is really a faction that is completely aggressive. There we go. Let's get some XP. We might have to wait a turn. We still have one. Um, as you can see, we have to be in the tile next to these guys to be able to damage them. I really want to get that uh, that hero's outpost. I might go ahead and snag another tile. I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's snag this one over here. And we'll clear notifications. End the turn. As your lordy says, the sound they make. Yeah, it's pretty creepy stuff. It is pretty creepy stuff. I love all these free crude hounds we've got around here, man. This just makes things uh, a lot easier for us, frankly. Just one turn away from acquiring that next tile. Let me think about this. Yeah, here's what I'll do. These are level 3 crude hounds here. They get a little tough. Hopefully it'll be worth the experience. I think that's that's going to be the most important thing here. So we can actually spend 10 influence to override the instinctive behavior here. Um, and again, that has to do with that hive mind. The hive mind is extremely important um, in controlling the aggressivity of the species, uh, the morale levels of the species, etc. So maybe if we use that, they can be aggressive sort of outside of the hive mind nonetheless. Okay, let's go for the attack. Why not? And he actually leveled up. Beautiful with this termigant unit here, and actually all of these termigant units. Let's clear notifications and end the turn.
Ooh-ah, ooh -ah, the crew down. All right, we may have just lost. Yeah, we lost one group of term against him. This is not good. We really want to try and boost our numbers as much as possible. Uh, and I definitely don't want these overseers coming close. I'm going to follow up, though. Um, let's run up here. See if we can eliminate them. Welcome back, Warrior Donut. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of, uh, of actual just, you know, neutral units on this particular map. Uh, I want to say we got unlucky with our starting position, but uh, it's an interesting starting position, to say the, le to say the least. Um, so we want to get that brood nest, guys. While a Norn Queen normally produces all of the creatures of a Tyranid invasion, in the circumstances that a brood is physically isolated from the Hive Fleet, certain specialized structures are used. Smaller creatures like Termigants are gestated in the pods of this nest, fed and warmed by the unthinking structures. Now this actually produces regular infantry, um, so again we could wait uh, potentially for the hero producing uh, unit here. I think we're actually still waiting for that research. Another thing that Tyranids can do, and this is fascinating right here, is the reclaim unit ability. So like, let's assume you have a unit that is either, you know, really weak, maybe like has very low health, or just, uh, you know, let's say it's like a level one unit and you've already got your units like level six, seven, eight, he's useless. Uh, you can bring him back here and you can reclaim him. Essentially, this sickly, sickly thing here will uh, just, you know, devour him pretty much, and you will actually get resources uh, for doing that. So this is something to keep in mind. I really do want to build um, that brood nest, though, and I'm thinking I might go ahead and go for it, although the most important thing is going to be the, the hero unit. So let's get the brood nest up um, just for now, just so that I can I can be constructing a building, uh, and after that we'll get the actual the heroes up as well. Well, that robot's back, and I hope it's not just, well, I hope it is just kind of going left and right here. We might actually try to head east, so I'm actually thinking well, we can actually move our units back and head east over here, check out that area, and sort of try to ignore this area. Seems to be pretty dangerous over here. For the swarm, says Skaven Dan. I like it. Uh, Engineer Kenny's asking, do these guys get the overkill ability? Yeah, absolutely. One second. Yeah, those, uh, they definitely make a heck of a sound when they are tearing apart the enemy, that's for sure. All right, boys and girls. And even turn there once again. We still need to get that Alpha of Appository, and that's going to be the next building. But again, since we lost that unit, I'm a little concerned. Um, so I, I want to get some of the regular infantry out as soon as possible. All right, guys. Whilst the Anthropia emerged solely from the Aidenthropium's long gestation sacs, the most complex synapse creatures take even more of the hive mind's resources and crucially focus. Each tyrant, turvagon, and prime requires careful design from the mind to give it that balance between total control and useful independence. The concentrated sensoria of the op of appository enable, uh, enable that focus. Beautiful. That is really nice. So we got the of appository guys. We can get the tyranid prime. Uh, of course, we can get the reclaim unit ability now. Um, we can get the Tervagon, and we can get the Hive Tyrant. We'll go into those more specifically as we get them uh, and actually read their backgrounds. Uh, for now, our next one we want to get is going to be the Tyranid Prime. Tyranid Primes are the apex of the Tyranid, Tyranid Warrior strain, faster, stronger, and smarter than the other warriors they lead to battle, who instinctively emulate their deadly skill. We need some of these guys. We really, really do. So we want to get that all repository up fairly quickly. First things first, and that is making sure that we are safe. So I'm going to bring these guys back. Man, H.R. Giger, if he was alive, would adore this faction. <laughs> Absolutely adore it. Now, um, I think Bard here mentioned I should go for Gargoyles, but I am I'm stubborn, and I'm kind of tempted to go for the Hormigans, uh first, because this is kind of like uh, a cheaper close combat infantry, infantry unit that can really get up close and personal with the enemy and just tear them to bits. Uh, but I'll, I'll go for the, gar the gargoyles here, especially since we have that robot nearby, and these gargoyles seem to be pretty good um, at dealing with those creatures. All right, guys, we're going to head east to see what we've got over here. Of course, we don't want to get into the wireweed. Uh, this stuff can really damage your units, so let's stay as far away from that as possible. So 
So Jarlord, uh, Italy is asking, I heard the units have a unique malices for when they're in their feral state. Uh, can you show them, uh, please? I think we should, we'll probably get to that uh, as we proceed through the game. I'm sure we'll have a situation where, where maybe they, uh, they sort of lose control and are, are a little far from the hive mind. Yeah, this is going to have one, more than one location, so we'll already begin constructing the Alba Ovipository. You guys can also see, um, very different from, from a standard city here in the game. Uh, just the way it looks, the appearance, it is, it is so organic in its appearance. You can tell, you can even see uh, sort of things moving around here. You know, it's just very, very creepy setup. Uh, and if, of course, if you enjoy the Tyranids, you're going to adore the look of the actual cities here. All right, we have arrived at a place called Embers of the Cost. It's not the coast, it's the cost. And uh, for those of you that are new uh, to Gladius, essentially each of the maps are randomized. And I like that, you know, there are specific geographical locations that will actually have like a name associated with them. So hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of this place here, the Embers of the Cost. And hopefully we can terrify uh, anybody from coming over here. Now, actually, it's an interesting area because there are Imperial Ruins over here. And right next to the Imperial Ruins is a Necron Tomb. So I think we can all guess probably what happened uh, to these, uh, these poor uh, Imperial citizens in here. Two turns away, guys. End the turn there. He's going to try to escape, of course. Send in another group of crude hounds. Sure enough, we might try to chase that one. I want to be careful, but I also am starving for XP. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't like the Overlord at all. And again, with just two of these units, I, I want to play it safe. Does the game have Zoanthropes? I think uh, Bart should be able to answer that. Let's see. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and produce some more Termigants. Uh, four turns to get the Termigant. And it's 20 biomass, uh, 24 production. Okay, not bad. I think we should eventually start producing buildings that, that generate biomass. And as you can see, we're already taking over the area with our biomass. You can see the area before it was just like a standard desert or savanna uh, or volcanic area even, and now it's turning into, you know, all organic matter. Let's bring our buddies back here. I'm actually going to keep this unit here for just a bit. Uh, let's hold position until healed with this guy. Hopefully some of these crude hounds will actually return uh, so I don't have to venture very far. There we go. That's what we like. All right, the gargoyles, guys. A tyrannid attack is preceded by the beating of thousands of membranous wings as gargoyle broods descend upon the foe, blotting out the sun and, sp and spitting death from their flesh borers. Their winged maneuverability gives gargoyles a distinctive hunting advantage. Wherever Tyranids attack a planet, the defenders look fearfully to the skies, for they know that every skyborne shadow could be a flock of gargoyles about to attack. Oh, I love it already. I like these guys. <laughs> uh, they seem quite interesting, um, the gargoyle units, so I can't wait to get these guys out. Let's go ahead and take the crew towns down. I wonder if that much healing is going to give them enough uh, strength to take out the crude hounds. Beautiful. That's what we need. Okay, guys. So we could go for gargoyles, or we could produce some more termagants. I, I want to see what the gargoyles are like. So we're going to get the uh, gargoyle unit, of course. Uh, but I'm going to start looking over here. I think we need to get a reclamation pool. Um, uh, Barty, if you want to let me know if that's, if that's necessary. I'm pretty sure, right? Necro uh, reclamation pool to get some biomass. Uh, to look here, we've got 25 biomass, 25.8 per turn. It seems like quite a lot to me, so maybe not. Maybe we can wait on or hold on the reclamation pool for a while. But clearly, that is a resource uh, that you need to consider when playing with Tyranids that you don't need to consider when playing with other factions. So, guys, now we are in level 2 research. Um, and we can get the Edenthropium, which will allow us to build Thropes. 
uh, and it will also generate some research. I'm thinking this what we this is what we probably want to go for here. Um, but turvagons also look pretty interesting. Uh, and what this is, is a Synapse Hero unit that spawns armies of Termagants. You want to have these Synapse Hero units close to your regular units if you can't keep your guys close to base. It's just that simple. Uh, they don't do well afar from base, but if they've got this guy with them, maybe they can do all right. I also really want to get the Toxin Sacks here, and all this really does is uh, in increase the damage done by the weapons that the Termagants are using and other um, missile factions, or excuse me, actually this is uh, referencing melee factions, so I guess that would be uh, sort of poison blades, things like that. Let's go for the Turvigans. And eventually we'll go back to the level 1 researches. Yeah, these are not turtling units. No, no, no. This is, this is pure aggressivity, man. You, you, with this faction... Uh, the only way to play is pretty much to be just as, as vicious as you can. Uh, I'm actually playing a little too defensively. No! Well, maybe not too defensively. Now we've got enslavers here. We're going to have to get away. Uh, what do you think? Do we, should we try to fight these enslavers, guys? You know what would be great is if, because we're controlled by a hive mind, they can't enslave us. Although I doubt that's actually going to occur. What do you think, guys, on the enslavers? While you guys are thinking about that, I'm going to go here and take a look. One turn away from getting, well, not the gargoyles, but at least getting some more termagants. Purge the enslavers, says Altorazine. Grey Knight says fight. I think I'm trusting uh, Bart on this on this response. Because <laughs> we don't want to lose uh, our, our game this early on. Interesting. So Bart says um, if they had the synapse unit close... Uh, they wouldn't be able to take over. Unfortunately, I think that guy is going to have to be left to the Overlord. Uh, we're just going to have to focus on the Termagants we do have. That's interesting, though. So if we had our Synapse unit, you can override um, any of the controls. But see, he's actually shaken, so that's another interesting thing here. He's got no hive mind to control him, so his morale is non-existent. I am I mistaken on that? It looks like his morale is non-existent here, so maybe we could just easily kill him uh, with our other Termagants. I'm not going to send any more out, though, until we get just a few more here, or at least until we get our gargoyle. So let's start building the gargoyle, and I'll also start producing the termagant. We'll heal this one up. One turn away, guys, from getting our alpha of oppository. Of it's it's just about time. We'll end the turn here. All right, we've got some crude hounds here. I guess they want to be devoured. And look at that. So that's just beautiful. Coming from the Hiflomex, uh, this thing is extremely deadly. Uh, like just about any building in Gladius Prime, you know, this building is capable of firing out at enemy units. Uh, this is no exception. So this is just a, basically some free XP by killing these termagants. Uh, you know, they used to be part of the hive. They no longer are, and that's just a shame. I'm going to have to teach them the error of their ways. All right, guys. Uh, we will be producing the Tyranid Prime here in the Alpha of, of Appository. Uh, and these are just extremely, extremely strong versions of, of Tyranids. You know, these, they're not, they're not like, it's not like a, a Queen Tyranid. It's, it's not how it works, but uh, it's an extremely Alpha Tyranid. This thing is, is vicious. It can take down a lot of different units, and we want some of these guys. So we're doing okay on just about everything. Uh, research, biomass, uh, everything's going pretty well. I'm starting to wonder, what do we want to pick up now? Sure, we can grab it. I can see what Snade is talking about. He's saying grab this, uh, the, the ruins of Vol here. We'll go ahead and grab that uh, here in a second. I kind of am tempted to do the reclaiming pool, but I think, uh, since I'm not too sure, I'm going to go ahead and acquire a tile. 
we'll just acquire this tile and continue to spread that biomass everywhere. And again, keep in mind, keeping our units as close to the cities as possible is good uh, because they, you know, they benefit from being close to this biomass. So you want to try to get as many cities out there as you can, and you want to expand them as much as you can with this disgusting uh, membranous uh, muck that makes up, you know, really the, the living space uh, of a Tyranid. Ready for hunting. Let's head out for the hunt. Go ahead and cap that point. Yes, good idea, Kendra. So he's talking about the Jokera camp. We had one over here, that's right. But last time we went there, things were pretty nasty. Uh, but maybe things will change. Maybe things will change. And it looks like the powered bullets will be the first thing we give to our, uh, our actual Tyranid uh, Alpha here. I'm trying to think. Should we go here? Should we maybe just pop up here and follow this unit? I think it's going to be important to keep these Tyranids together. You know, they're not exactly very strong on their own. So let's just move them up here. We can wait one turn and then head back out. Besides, our actual home base here, uh, the Hippo, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing this every time, the hep Hippo, the Hippo Poly... Polymyphex, uh, or the Hippolymphex, I, I guess it's the Hippolymphex would be the most appropriate. Um, you know, we want this thing close, as close as possible. It's got some very good defensive abilities, so I'm not going to be concerned with, like, keeping our guys close to base to defend it. Uh, I am going to be fairly aggressive with them. Let's push out. We just use one more unit, though. Just one more, two turns away, guys, from the gargoyles here. Why is that, Kendra? That's not good. Uh, yeah, let's approach here. I don't want to, like, go all the way out here because, again, we could we could come across that um, enslaver. And that would pretty much ruin our day. So I'm going to keep my distance. I'm still going to be aggressive, but I'm going to just try to, you know, not get too close to what I can't see, pretty much. All right, let's see. Our, our gargoyle is being built. Oh, wait a minute. We got crude hounds. I love the crude hounds, man. They're, they're so fun, so easy to kill. All right, we've got the Turvagon. The Turvagon is a massive synapse creature whose towering carapace shields a swollen abdomen. Though possessed of a formidable array of bioweapons, from monstrous claws that could crush any prey that ventures too close, to banks of razor-tipped spines that can be fired a considerable distance, the Turvagon's true threat lies within. Every Turvagon serves as a living incubator within whose bloated form dozens upon dozens of Termigans slumber in a state of near life. The Turvagon can spawn its dormant broods at will, jolting their minds into wakefulness. I want one of these things. I really do. Um, it seems pretty great. And as you can see here, these are the different abilities that this thing has. It's got a living incubator ability. Um, it's got a catalyst ability, restores the hit points of the Turvagon and target allied unit. It's got a brood progenitor, so it actually increases attack uh, for missile units. And, uh, of course, the mass incubation. I mean, this is just really cool stuff. And that's just that's just a few of the different abilities this thing can use. Um, so we really want to get one of these out as soon as possible. This is also a synapse creature. Um, and the reason the synapse uh, ability is so important, once again, goes back to the hive mind thing. If we've got this thing near our termagants, uh, we don't necessarily need to be near the hive mind because we can use this ability. Uh, and pretty much, you know, they'll still have uh, a connection to the hive mind. Ah, <laughs> uh, that makes sense. Oh, no way. Wow, I didn't know that. So, Kondra just uh, shared a really interesting point here. Um, that looks really vicious. You know, some of our hero units, they look extremely strong. But I don't think we can actually use any of the items um, because, yeah, we are, you know, once again, we're, we're entirely organic creatures. You know, these, these, these are not like weapons that were actually produced in a factory. These are weapons that essentially grew out of this Tyranid's body. Um, so, you know, we're, we're not about to pick up a weapon off the ground or anything like that or some sort of magical item. That just seems kind of, kind of silly. All right, here we go. We've got our gargoyles. Oh, look at these beauties. They're just so pretty. So cute. Cute little uh, death, death machines, really. Uh, let's move these guys over here. Oh, man, they look wonderful. Even the way they fly. Just beautiful. Uh, I might actually cancel this term against. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, uh, kind of tempted to get uh, some more of the, 
the beautiful, beautiful gargoyles. I think I am. Uh, it's, it takes just two more turns to get them, uh, but I think it might be worth it. And they've also got the jump pack ability. Um, so similar to, you know, like the jump pack ability on uh, on some of these Space Marine units, uh, we can actually get in pretty close. Even, even a unit that's, like, deadly from afar, we can get in pretty close there. All right, choosing the next research... So, the Scavenger Adaptation reduces the influence upkeep of resource buildings. We don't really have any issues regarding influence right now, but we might later. Uh, but that's definitely something we can come back to. Uh, the Hibernation Marsupia increases population limit. And considering the fact that, you know, we already are um, a faction that desperately needs, like, more and more and more uh, Tyranids, I think this might also be a pretty decent thing uh, to go for. Then again, the Tyranid Warriors look tempting, and so do the Hormigonauts. We haven't gotten either of these yet. Um... And also, the Savage Apresents. This would reduce the influence cost of, for instance, the Synapse creatures, etc. Uh, you know, all important things. But, oh man, it's a tough one. I think I'm going to go for the Hormigonauts. Ah, thank you, sir. Gallic has a good idea there. So he suggested, let's go for the influence buildings. Kind of uncertain of what to build next. Uh, let's do it. Uh, so a building that generates actual influence is going to be the Synapse Node. The Hive Mind's capabilities aren't spread evenly through its structures. Somewhere there needs to be concentrated systems for thought. In the Hive Fleet, these are the Norn Queens. On the ground, these synapses act as a temporary backup to the network effect from its individual creatures, allowing the mind to focus on more objectives than simply controlling the swarm. All right, uh, let's put it over here. I think it's a good idea. Four turns away, and it's going to be two turns until we get our Tyranid Prime. So yeah, I hope it doesn't bankrupt us. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think we can use the jump pack ability now because we just moved, but maybe it would have been more uh, more useful for us to just jump over here as opposed to uh, trying to kind of move there. Welcome back, Unrescuer. So let me just test this out here. So it looks like it, it's within a reasonable distance. Yeah, it looks like maybe two turns or, or two spaces away we can jump. Let's just try it. I just want to see what it looks like. Nice. I love the uh, the little flying creatures here. They really do do look, you know, quite adorable in like a vicious, uh, you know, killer demon sort of way. One turn away, guys, until we get that beautiful... Tyranid Prime. I cannot wait to get the Tyranid Prime, and then I feel pretty confident to just head out. I even feel confident to take out the uh, Enslavers. In fact, we might go for these guys um, pretty soon here. I think I'll move back now. I, I don't know if I want to take that risk. And there we go. Chapter 1, Pro Phase. Uh, we've already completed the objectives there of Chapter 1, uh, and I guess we get a recovery package as a reward. Yeah, level 2 Enslaver. Hmm... Look at this thing, man. Let's take a look. Oh, she's beautiful. She's a beauty. Look at that. That is just... <laughs> wow. Just wow. Um, so I think... I'm wondering if having this thing close... And wait, maybe we can take the unclaimed items. Let's take the power bowl. So no. No, Chandra. Um, we can absolutely equip items here, which is good news. Uh, I was thinking the same thing, though, that since these are, you know, biomass or, uh, you know, essentially organic creatures, that they wouldn't be picking up things like that. But it looks like they are definitely capable um, of doing that. And let's also go ahead and level up and select one of the abilities. So there's Scourge of the Brood, uh, and this would increase uh, its damage. The Adaptive Biology increases the Feel No Pain damage reduction. Uh, and this over here is the Alpha Warrior. This would increase our overall accuracy. I think I'm going to go for Scourge of the Brood, really. wonder if we could take out that, uh, that Enslaver or if we should wait for the Tyranid Prime. Again, I feel like I'm being a little too cautious. So I might, I might go ahead and attack. I 
I'm just seeing if I would be able to get in on all three angles, and I wouldn't. So, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be a chicken here and just stay put. I mean, frankly, I'd prefer the, the slavers just go away and we could just feed off the crude hounds. I think that's what's about to happen here. Here we go, boys and girls. Now I want to see the things in action, the gargoyles in action. Let's push them up. Just awesome. They go on essentially a bombing run there of any enemy creatures. And this is also interesting. So typically with your units, uh, you need to like, you know, literally be touching here uh, for them to gain experience from something that you kill. But that's interesting because of the hive mind ability. This Tyranid Prime is at least two tiles away, and he still gained experience from that kill. That's pretty neat. I want some more of those gargoyles. We got these being produced. Um, hmm. Then again, the Termigans do have, uh, you know, the ability to fire missiles, and we do want to try to swarm the enemy, so I'll get some Termigans. All right, Castellan robots. Oh, no. Oh, no. We've got two Castellan robots. This is not so good. Oh boy. Yeah, I think we're gonna head head out immediately. The Hormagons. Hormagons are vicious and extraordinarily single-minded predators that will pursue their victims without pause or respite. With powerful hind legs, Hormagons dart across the battlefield in a series of bounding leaps, ignoring injury and tiredness until they have run down their exhausted quarry and torn it apart with frenzied strikes of their scythe-like claws. Okay, I can't make, wait to get, get some Hormagons, but for now... Let us move back. If there's a chance for us to, you know, save this unit, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. Now, I wonder if this is a one-turn ability, the Scourge of the Brood, uh, which increases our damage, or if it's something that, you know, happens for several turns. I think we'll just wait on that. You know, a lot of our buildings re require influence. That's why we got that uh, building that actually produces it. Uh, but I'm wondering if we should be getting some more buildings that produce influence. I think for now, uh, we're, you know, we're eventually going to need research and uh, also some biomass. But research is probably um, important right now. And it says here, uh, though the Malanthropes are responsible for physically collecting genetic data from a planet's population, the Epicure is the structure that processes those samples. Inside the Epicure's fluted mass, delicate structures pair and sort the genetic samples, testing them on a microscopic scale for useful innovations. When something is discovered, it is immediately communicated to the Norn Cyst and hence onto the hive mind. That's just fascinating. I guess that's how these Tyranids research. You know, they're not going to have scientists or anything like that. Um, it's just really fascinating stuff. So we'll get some more gargoyles here in a second. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll get, yeah, we'll get the genetic... Um, Genetic Epicure right there. And I'll get the Hibernation Marsupia, guys, um, to eventually increase the population limit. We're at 6 of 7, so we definitely want to increase that population limit very soon. Hold on one second, folks. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, I want to turn off Steam Chat there. Okay, so these gargoyles, yeah, they're pretty badly injured. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna bring them back to base here. Pull these gargoyles out. But again, I want to move as a group with these units. Let's head over here uh, to recover our scattered units, so we can we have basically um, a reason to head west. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it. I'm gonna take this opportunity. So we kind of have to head that way anyway.
And of course, this is just going to add to the already massive hive. <laughs> Everybody just checks Steve. Yeah, it was, I, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, uh-uh. Nobody's interrupting my, uh, my wonderful Tyranids here. Here we go. We got some crude hounds. It's been a while since we've seen some uh, some delicious flesh to consume. And I want to see this thing in action. So we're going to actually bring out the Tyranid Prime, guys. See if we can get into some close combat. Oh. They've got two left. Let's uh, finish them off. But I'm going to finish them off with this unit so that hopefully this turn we can heal this unit a bit. Thank you so much, Bart. That's very nice. Yeah, we're going to bring these guys along for sure. Let's just heal this guy up. And this guy can only heal, you know, like 10% at a time here, but we're going to do that um, as well. I really want these guys to be strong for what lies ahead. Could be more castle and robots. Who knows? Yeah, that poison is definitely corrosive. There's several actual skills um, in the research tree of the uh, the actual um, Tyranids that, that definitely suggest that there is... Um, um, I guess it actually wouldn't be poison, would it? It would be venom, I believe. It just that, you know, it transfers from these biological creatures. They can sort of cut into you and inject that venom into your, uh, into your blood. Yeah, I think we'll keep our distance. Okay, we should have a termagant next turn. Ah, uh, interesting. Uh, Bart was mentioning we can also give them extra flesh hooks. So there's all sorts of ways, um, sort of like evolutionary upgrades. Uh, that can be, you know, added to our creatures as they gain experience. As we research more things, these Tyranids will slowly but surely improve. Just such a versatile unit. And those aren't our Termagants. We did find some Termagants, but they're not ours. These are wild Termagants, I believe. Let's get rid of them. Wait a minute. Oh, no, that's the ones that we found. That's right. This is part of the quest. So these are our Termagants, but I want to save them. Let's bring them back here immediately. We are starting to create quite the fearsome army, guys. We haven't found any other factions yet, though, so that might take a little while um, before we actually come across any uh, enemy factions, let's say. I think we can move these guys out. And you know what? Even the uh, gargoyles are pretty much ready to join us. So let's have at it. And as you can see right now, I mean, we already have a formidable force. This is pretty terrifying stuff. I think we could even early game uh, stomp another faction with the Tyranids pretty easily. Um, it seems like they get these these powerful units out, uh, you know, pretty fast in comparison to a lot of the other factions. Hmm. Let's try these Hormagons, guys. We haven't tried them yet. It's five turns for the Hormagon. So that's interesting. It's four turns for the Termagant. Uh, five for the Hormigan and six for the Gargoyle. All pretty decent units. Okay, the Hibernation Marsupia. Excess biomass and genetic data are simply stored in the thickened walls of the biostructures or flow twitching between them. But when a creature has been grown, sometimes the hive mind deems it more efficient to retain it, but shut down its functions. Stored in... in is that serried? I've never heard that word before. <laughs> Stored in serried ranks of marsupia. Interesting. All right. Um, so, again, describing just the... The, the sort of organic nature um, of these Tyranids. And now we can actually increase our population limit. I think that's going to be the next building we produce. Let's take a look here. And it's going to be this one, the Hibernation Marsupia. And we'll put it over here in the north, actually. 
no reason, just because. Um, I do want to attack, but I want to get these guys close so that they can benefit from the uh, experience gain as well. So let's do this. And I know all of us want to see the Tyranid Prime destroy this thing, so I have brought him in specifically for this job. Uh, I like Bart's suggestion. So he's, he's suggesting um, that we take these units that we just uh, reclaimed, we send them back to base, and we attempt the Reclamation ability. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, sorry, Hormigans, you're, you're going to be eaten um, by the Horde here. Um, these are Hormigans, though. These are actually our close combat units. So I'm thinking maybe we want to keep them and sack one of the Termigans. I don't know. What do you guys think? The Termigans seem to be not as good. It's sort of the cheapest unit you can get, um, but still pretty damn strong, I'll admit. All right, guys, now we're getting into level three research here. Uh, we've got birthing canals, which reduces the influence upkeep of production buildings. We've got the brood haunt that uh, produces ground-based monstrous creatures and generates biomass. I think that's what we're going to go for here. Uh, but I'll take a look at all of them so you guys get an idea of, of these. Uh, we've got the coherence node, which will increase our loyalty. Uh, we've got the flesh hooks, and this is what Bart was mentioning earlier. Um, that grants Tyranid Warriors and Tyranid Primes an additional melee weapon. Makes them much deadlier than they already are. The Hive Tyrant is a flying synapse hero with specific uh, terrifying psychic powers. Absolutely awesome stuff. And then we've got the Malanthrope Gustra Flagelli, Flagelli. But for this, we actually need to um, build the Adenthropium first. Which I think we have... You know, we actually we haven't researched it yet. Uh, but this is definitely something we want to go for. So I'm actually going to go for the Adenthropium. Uh, and then after that, we'll we'll go for maybe the hooks or something else. The tail switch is particularly nice. How you doing, Pixel? Good to see you, bud. <laughs> Alteressine said, uh, yeah, we just saved you. Now just go stand over there while we help you some more. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We consume them. Let's go ahead and... So it's supposed to be in here. We've got um, an ability that will <coughs> chew up this creature. Maybe it needs to be a little bit closer uh, to the main base here. Or maybe we actually need to use our hero unit to eat him up. Let's take a look here. Yeah, I think we'll wait till next turn. Oh, you know what? He might need to actually be right on the tile. That's another thing here. So let's get him right there on the actual tile. Put him in the most infected tile, for lack of a better word. Okay, here we go, guys. We're going to reclaim this unit. I'm going to zoom in. I don't know if there's actually a specific uh, animation that goes along with it. Uh, but again, we're reclaiming a Turing unit to regain biomass and production at the cost of uh, influence. We're, we're, we're eating this unit up. So here we go. Oh, I love that. I love that. I kind of wish I had saved, though, because I, I want that unit. But that's pretty great, man. Um, and look at that biomass. That's, that's just amazing. Uh, really, really fascinating stuff there. Were they just, like, liquefied? Was that, like, an acidic... Um, you know, sort of stomach acid, corrosive stomach acid that just ate them up there. Man, I would not want to be a Tyranid. That's, that's frightening. It's like what happens anytime any money hits my bank account. That you've been swallowed into the biomass of society. Uh, what other building do we want? I mean, again, we're doing pretty well. Uh, loyalty is going to be the issue here. But I'm not even sure if loyalty matters. Um, and, you know, to get loyalty, we actually need to research the building. Is it going to matter with a hive mind? Maybe it does matter. And I'm going to try the adaptive biology uh, boost here for the Tyranid Prime. Ah, 
Ah, uh, thank you, Surger. So he's uh, suggesting to keep the uh, hero uh, synapse unit sort of in the middle um, of our force, and that makes sense. We want to try and keep this guy alive, but also because of his ability uh, to pass on, you know, the, the hive mind's wishes, essentially. So there's the Hormigunts. Uh, these we just got. We haven't tried them out yet. But essentially what they have, I've, I've seen models of these two. These are really pretty. Um, what they've got is these two, like, blades uh, right on the front of their body, or like, sort of where their hands should be. Um, and these blades can just tear through so many different things. Uh, extremely effective against flesh, of course. I want to see these things in combat. You can also get that ability on them to uh, give them an additional uh, blade to use, and also to give them venomous blades. Uh, so these blades will pretty much envenomate the enemy, as well as just do even more damage uh, on top of the, the existing damage that they already do. I'm going to try to kind of get around my hero here. Let's go for the Gargoyle. That's actually a good question. Um, Altorazine is asking uh, for the liquidization part. Uh, do you get an equal amount of resources that were used to create the unit, or is it uh, more or less? We're already saying we need more influence, so what we'll do here is we'll boost the influence uh, with the Synapse node here after we uh, build the hibernation marsupia. So we'll put that right there. Okay, there we go, guys. We have found the next faction, and eh, bad news, at least for us. Uh, two hive minds, what horror is this? Race on race of identical monsters evolving at the same pace, moving in the same way. Two clone armies battling each other, matched blow for blow, tearing each other apart only to rebuild the remains the same. The planet survivors look on aghast, knowing that whoever wins, they lose. Guys, we have found the next faction, and it's another group of Tyranids. Uh, and they've got an Ossifex out here. Uh, Tyranid City, it looks totally open. This looks ready for the plunder. Um, but I'm not sure I want to take the risk of attacking an actual Tyranid city here. Um, we'll see what you guys think. And depending on what you say, we'll, we'll go ahead and move forward. Uh, but we might go ahead and hit them. Um, looks undefended for now. Again, they could have units around, or we might not just not be seeing the biomass over here. Uh, I think there's definitely more biomass here. And keep in mind, even if we attack this thing, it can still do a lot of damage to us before we actually destroy it uh, or you know weaken it. And you know we might not even manage to destroy it. Uh, to be honest with you. So I think for now, yeah, we'll just keep building. The Aedanthropum. Not all Terranid creatures are equal. Whilst Termagants and Hormigons require little focus and unspecialized resources, uh, the construction and gestation of more complex creatures can take more care. In isolated hives like that of Gladius, the diverse support creatures of the Imperium gave us Anthropia, Venomthropes, Zoanthropes, and Malanthropes, all, emor all emerge from a specialized biostructure of grisly columns, podia, and caverns. Ugh. Creepy, man. Very creepy. Okay, uh, yeah, it's probably the second city. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, not really built up too much. The question is, do we want to attack? I think we do. I think we do. Why not? Oh my goodness! Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Damn, they're going to have really good defenses. <laughs> There's nothing stopping that. Um, let's get in there with our Tyranid Prime. So just gave it a uh, Scourge of the Brood upgrade there. Which pretty much makes his uh, his attack increases, his damage increases, etc. I don't know if that's going to be enough to destroy this thing, but let's hope that it actually is.
we're taking <clears throat> a pretty big risk here, so you know what? Uh, let me just, just to be safe, here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and uh, overwrite this save. Or actually, we, we auto-save every turn, so we could just jump back to the previous save if we ever need to. Uh, let's just hope it doesn't come to that. And I think I want to get the Brood Haunt, but again, um, we do need that that building that increases loyalty as well, the Coherence node. Uh, so let's uh, let's do that. Oh, interesting. So Bart just shared a fun fact there. Um, the initial version of the Tyranid Prime was way too strong. It could one hit a fortress of redemption under the right circumstances. Wow. So yeah, you guys had to uh, lower the uh, the effect and the strength here of uh, this particular uh, biomass, or this particular creature, excuse me. All right, uh, let's see. Someone's in trouble, I'll say that. Uh, let's get close with these Hormigons. Here we go, boys and girls. So again, using those bone-like appendages uh, to just try and tear this thing apart. If it works, it works. I think we're going to be able to destroy this Tyranid City, which is going to be pretty cool, man, to be able to destroy a city this early on in the game. And again, they could still have reinforcements that we're just not seeing right now, uh, and they could return before we have to kill this thing. This is just really, like, you know, inappropriate guys. This Tyranid on Tyranid violence we're seeing here, it's just unacceptable. I mean, these, these Tyranids should learn to work together. It's actually like a really, really strong creature. If these two factions actually work together, we could probably take over the entire map uh, extremely quickly. I don't think it would take very long at all. Another thing is I just don't like them around us. I don't like them near us because they could be returning any time. They could be over here to the south and we just haven't spotted them. What we're going to do is we're going to actually break south when we destroy that city and go for this area over here. We could potentially just send a lone unit over there too uh, to try and pick up this unit, but something tells me that we're going to get ambushed and lose all of our units if we try that. So let's let's not uh, let's not push it. That's right. That's right, Richard. All right, let's end the turn. Um, Slobodan is asking if there will be a replay on the YouTube or Twitch. Yeah, there will be a uh, replay on uh, the Slytherin YouTube channel, on the Agrippa Maxenius YouTube channel, and on the Slytherin Twitch channel, I believe. Pretty sure. Um, Twitch might take a little longer to upload than, than usual, I'm, I'm not sure, depending on just uh, the length of the stream. I want to get this guy out of here. Let's go. And I knew it. They, there are some crewdowns, and these are not actually, you know, these don't belong to uh, this uh, particular player. It's just kind of frustrating that we have to deal with crude hounds now. I'm going to put all my focus on the off effects. these powered bolas reduce the movement and accuracy of target enemy unit yeah we don't really need that let's just attack now i'd love to jump over here and attack this crude hound unit but the fact is there's wire weed here if we stay here we're going to be taking damage every turn so what we will do is hold until healed same with these guys.
All right, fingers crossed. I really want this to work. I really, really do. And I get the feeling we can uh, take this thing down pretty soon. Even at the risk of potentially losing some of these units, I'm going for the attack. I'm going to go ahead and use that uh, Scourge of the Brood, guys. Again, boosting his attack or melee ability. And first he fires that Venomous Slime, of course, onto the enemy. Only then does he actually go ahead and decide to use that ability. I have to say, the Tyranids are pretty disgusting. <laughs> they're really cool and really dangerous, but a little gross. Uh, yeah, what can I say? You know, they're very, very bug-like. Join the hive mind. One turn away from getting that next gargoyle. Oh my goodness. All right, we got some more crude hounds here. Kind of just popped up out of nowhere. And I think now we are going in for the kill. Here we go, guys. I thought we had it for sure. I thought we had it for sure. Maybe one more attack. Uh, this is risky, though, because these guys are pretty already really badly damaged. If we can get this kill, man. Yes, there we go. She's gone. Thank you for your sacrifice. And look at that. A massive experience boost here. A bunch of level ups. Uh, we're just much stronger. Much stronger. I love it, guys. So at this point, you know, we can continue moving with this horde. I think that was just very important, you know, for the sole, for the sole reason that... We want to have a really strong group of units uh, working together here. You know, able to sort of work off each other. As you can see, we're really far from base. Now, you know, to, as you guys have learned um, about these Tyranid abilities, for instance, if we were to lose this Tyranid Prime over here, these guys would be completely, completely useless. Uh, they wouldn't be able to do much of anything. So that's the importance of heroes here. And I don't know too much about Tyranids in PvP, but I would suggest... Uh, from what I've seen, that you probably want to go for those hero units. You want to try and get rid of enemy hero units, especially if they are far from the actual base. Haha, <laughs> you're right, Alto. You're absolutely right. Uh, Alto says, nice, but this confirms there are other hive mind cities. And he's right, because if, uh, if there weren't, then we would just have gotten a pop-up saying, you know, essentially like, uh, the city has been destroyed and this faction has been wiped out. That didn't happen. There's plenty of these guys. All right, let's see here. We do eventually want to get the Anthropium, so let's go ahead and get started on it at least. Again, I could go with this lone unit to try and uh, get our lost unit, but that's just not the style of Tyranids. You're not supposed to be using like single units in, with any of these factions, really, but especially with the Tyranids. You know, it's just it's not gonna. It's not going to do you any favors unless you get really lucky. <laughs> Richard York says, start eating each other. <laughs> we just delved, in, delved into madness. Okay, let's go after those crude hounds. I want, again, I want everybody to benefit from the XP, so... <clears throat> excuse me, guys. I'm actually going to try and keep these guys uh, fairly close. I might not attack right away. First, I want to, like, kind of surround this guy and uh, get our guys just in these uh, gaps, essentially. Stimulate or die. Beautiful. Do we get any level ups? Oh, yeah, we did. All right, so the Termigants actually leveled up there. And, you know, the idea is just continue moving towards this area where we uh, where we have this lost unit. And now I am kind of tempted to send this guy out on his own. Although, again, I don't recommend this. 
All right, two Catachan Devils. But I have to say, with this force, I'm not too concerned. We've also got that Castle and Robot, and I kind of want to attack him with this group just to see if we could destroy him and how quickly we destroy him. All right, guys, the Coherence Node. An Imperial Scholar might make an analogy between a Coherence Node and something like a Radio Tower, and certainly its Orchid appearance fits, but it doesn't transmit but receives. The node's folded surface tracked the location of the hive mind's creatures for the most efficient deployment of its synapses to prevent the hive swarms falling into anarchy and chaos. All right, let's keep moving. Um, as much as I'd love to go towards those Catachan devils, I'm actually going to try and find the robot here, the Castellan robot. Ouch. Yep, I found him. I found him, guys. I found the robot. Let's, uh, let's attack. Or did he find me? Here we go. Uh, once again, boosting combat. We can't get right on top of them uh, this turn. We're going to have to wait just a little bit. We can get close. Look at that, guys. Just look at our force of lovely Tyranids. Let's take a look here. And, of course, you know, you have to imagine that um, these are these uh, this landmass, these units are, are just like a sort of a size marker for, you know, entire armies. So... This would really be, you know, a bunch of Tyranids covering miles and miles and miles and miles of territory, just spread out all over the place. Uh, that would be the size of a swarm like this. Yarlodisa says, me smash. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some more of those robots near that Jakaro and Kemen. Although, wait a minute, that could have been um, one of those robots. That's what I think happened there. I really want to get this guy closer, man, but look at that. With the Katachan Devil here. Let's just go. Let's just go. All right, I'm going to go for the Brood Haunt, guys. I already had my eyes on that um, beforehand. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. We've got some Tech Priests there, too. Pixel says the devils are so creepy. I don't like them either. I, I can't stand like millipedes and centipedes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they do remind me a little bit of them. Okay, here we go. We've saved you boys. Well, we're just going to sacrifice you, but we've at, we've saved, you know, or we've given the viewers the gift of, of your entertaining uh, death. I mean, you know, we do like to watch you guys get swallowed up by the, uh, the disgusting... Uh, gelatinous creature that's residing underneath the underneath uh, this hypolymphex. So we're going to go ahead and feed him to it uh, very, very soon here. Just make sure we can't get another attack. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, Alright, keep attacking. Fair enough. And I'll actually take this opportunity to try and heal some of these units. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hold this position till healed. Hold this position till healed. And this one, yeah, he's going to have to actually move back uh, or else he's going to get killed next turn. And I'm doing everything I can um, to save these units uh, so that they can just get stronger and stronger. And again, that's not that's not necessarily a turret-specific tactic. That's something you should be trying to do in this game anyway, uh, is save as many of your units as you can. I really want to take down this robot. I really, really do. Ah, thank you. So you're saying the gargoyles will do more damage. The gargoyles are actually uh, useful, very useful against uh, armored units, you know, robots, tanks, things like this. Uh, sort of their, their forte. So let's move forward with those gargoyles. 
I'm actually move with these first. We won't attack. Oh no! I totally messed up. Uh, not too bad. Just trying to put them over here. Let's get these gargoyles uh, to replace this area. Trying to get this gargoyle unit over here and completely failed that. The hive mind would not be impressed. Luckily, I think we've damaged this thing to such an extent, it's going to be uh, very hard for it to do any damage to our units. But I do want to continue holding the position until healed with these guys. And again, we can only get 10% at a time. It's really not much. The Termagants have gotten so strong that they're even able to do some significant damage to Tech Priests. I love it. And we'll bring this guy f in for assimilation. Assimilation by sacrifice. Here we go, boys and girls. Let's eat him up. Goodbye. <laughs> I love that. That's just, that's great. That really is. All right, the robot's trying to escape. Ah, damn robots, man. And the tech priests just boost him. They boost his health. Oh, those tech priests are going to pay with their lives. Yeah, if we have these guys con continually uh, healing that robot, it's going to be really hard to ever kill him. Let's get rid of the tech priests. Just an instant kill from the uh, Tyranid Prime there. And I love just how strong these creatures are. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed by the, the, the hero abilities here. Not, not the hero abilities, but just the hero um, attack power here of the Tyranids. I really, really like the Tyranid Prime here. It's just vicious. It's an absolute killer. Let's get these guys close. And again, I'm really going to focus on um, the health. In fact, it might be a good idea to bring these guys back to base temporarily. Um, we are going to be closing the stream pretty soon. But obviously, if you were going to continue a game like this... Uh, once we got them back to base, we'd want to heal them and then send them back out. Uh, in this case, we might not have the need to do that because this robot's pretty badly damaged. So maybe we can just uh, get rid of the robot here in a second. All right, let's go for the kill. Uh, yeah, definitely. Here we go. Ooh, that really hurt. Catachan Devil is in our way, um, so I'm actually going to send uh, the Tyranid Prime here. I also want to increase my Scourge of the Brood skill, so let's go ahead and increase that. This should increase attack power even more. Just watch this, guys. You guys know how tough Catachan Devils usually are. You know, it takes so much to kill them. It really does. Watch this. See that health? Look at that. I mean, just... The Catachan Devil is almost dead. That's It's incredible. Officially, my my new favorite hero, without a, without a, a doubt. I really do want to go for the kill, but I don't know if we have enough. Uh, we risk losing a unit here in the attack. Let's do it. Nice, beautiful, beautiful job there. So now they actually got a name, guys. As you guys know, like sometimes when uh, your units uh, level up, you know they get sort of a name. The Hermagons here got the name the. Thylakoid Idlers, which I think is a pretty appropriate name um, for a Tyranid unit. That gelatinous ooze, things like that, like that would kind of make sense for this style of army at least.
pull back. Another Katachan Devil over here. We could kill him and just, um, you know, once again, grab another another huge uh, handful of XP. Not a bad idea. It's going to take more than one turn, though, because we didn't get the boost this turn, so I don't think we'll do as much damage, but we'll still do quite a lot. Yeah, as you can see there, we're still doing a number on them. Let's just get these guys to run back to base. I think anybody that's below half health, uh, I'm going to bring back. Beautiful kill there. Yeah, the Terranids are extremely strong on the attack. I, I, I'm just really, really impressed by the, the attack strength. I'm, in general, a, a very aggressive player by nature in strategy games, so... This is right up my alley. I'll look for you guys on a multiplayer after this. And of course, this particular um, DLC is being released on the 15th, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So there's still a few days to wait. Let's get that Turvagun. Okay, guys. We're getting uh, fairly close here, guys, to the end of the stream. So if you have any uh, further questions uh, for me or for Bart, please make sure to... Uh, you know, put them down below. It's a good time to ask. Get these guys all back to base. It's going to be tough. Though. Like, I hate the elevation here. You guys see that? Like, I rarely see this on Gladius Prime, but we really do have, like, a large uh, elevation here where to actually get down this hill, we actually have to go down this volcanic pass over here, turn left. Uh, well, my right, your left, uh, and go over here and essentially, you know, grab this area over here. I should say, not my right, your right. Bring it down. Yeah, I'm gonna try to... So this guy seems to be able to... It doesn't really matter for the Hervagon. Seems to be able to just jump over that without much issue. Make sure to uh, pass on the message uh, for sure, uh, Bensi. So yeah, we should we should actually show that off just in case nobody saw that. So if we click on the gargoyle unit, guys, we've got this jump pack here, uh, which allows us to essentially jump over uh, these areas here in, in Bart's right. So we could probably just use the jump pack to jump over this sort of uh, this overpass or this overhang. But it also obviously works if you if you need to get around an obstacle, something like that. It's uh, it's pretty useful. Okay, ending the turn now. Okay, guys, it's the next research, and I actually want to take a look at the the newest researches that we have over here. So let's actually move up here and take a look at what's new. Uh, and of course, look, this goes all the way up to tier 10. You know, we're not going to be, have a chance to get to tier 10 today. But, you know, we're at just at tier 4, which is fairly early on. It's, it's not yet, like, mid-game. Um, and as you can see here, we've got the... Um, additional blast weapon for our Carnifexes, uh, or not for our Carnifexes, for our uh, missile troops. Uh, this is really cool if you've got a lot of those termagants, etc. You want to use these spine banks. We've also got Gigaborer Hives. Increases the output damage of short-ranged weapons. We've got the Hyra Specs, and this is a monstrous creature with a grasping tongue. It's one of the reasons we actually picked up that Brood Haunt. We've also got the uh, Mega Fauna Sack, and this is important for, you know, essentially building new cities, expanding, etc. You're really going to want this. Um, and I think with this faction specifically, if you are not following your units around with Hive Tyrants all the time, 
you're gonna want to have several cities like you, you know you want to have like cities in other locations so that if you leave your first one and you're kind of far from it you don't immediately just get completely stomped on for having low morale uh, etc you know once again if you're away from that hive mind you're just going to be useless the metamorphic malanthropes and this recruits reduces the cost of founding a new city and we've got the raveners and this is a fast beast unit for close combat to me, one of the ter most terrifying looking Tyranid units. It is, it's a creepy, creepy uh, Tyranid unit to say the least. Uh, but I think I'm just going to go actually for some basics uh, right now. Uh, maybe even get the, the Hive Tyrant, which is another uh, hero class, or the Toxin Sacks. And this will actually increase the damage of our melee weapons. Once again, the close combat damage. It's almost like adding, um, you know, Venom to, uh, to any blades we have. So... Even if the unit survives, maybe maybe they don't survive once they make it back to base. Oh yeah, this guy desperately needs healing. Actually, most of these units do. But we got these guys almost all up to uh, level 4, uh, just with those attacks destroying the city, etc. So we've got a pretty strong force for early game, or at least appropriate. You know, we're, we're getting to research level 4, so yeah, this, this, this kind of makes sense. And I'm going to go ahead and get the Idanthropium. Um, this is not necessarily what I would get if I was continuing. But as you guys see, and, and it's something I really like about the uh, Tyranid city structure... You know, each of the cities sort of have their own theme associated with them. And you can see here that the Tyranid city, the theme is just overgrowth of, uh, of, this, of this biomass. You know, just be these, these membranes, all of these different living uh, sort of thorns rising up out of the ground. Uh, if you see, as you can see, like these little holes almost looks like, I don't know, it looks like, um, like a living entity. It's, uh, it's, it's terrifying, you know, absolutely terrifying. Not if you're a Tyranid, it's probably very cozy. Yeah, somebody, so people were mentioning what they would like to see uh, as a next DLC, and it looks like um, Kandra said he'd like to see Chaos. Oh, nice. Um, nice one. Woe's just got a close combat gateway to Khan. Excellent, excellent choice there. I think that's what I'd like to see too, Bente. It's my favorite faction of the game is uh, Tao. We're going to produce another Malanthrope, guys. This would allow us to uh, get another uh, city, of course. And if we just read here, it says Malanthropes are rarely seen Tyranid creatures. This is because they are not truly warrior organisms, and so are not usually encountered by Prey World's defenders. Instead, these floating creatures follow behind the Tyranid attack. They are typically created only after a Prey World's protectors have been defeated, and the swarm is in the process of devouring the planet's biomass. On those few occasions that a survivor has seen a Malanthrope and somehow escaped, they have been brought with them a tale of horror. They report seeing these giants drift across corpse-strewn battlefields, but unlike other Tyranids, which mindlessly devour everything in their way, Malanthrope seems to selectively search through the slain, as to know that what they are searching for. So, you know, an interesting uh, creature, and of course that's what you use to build your bases, uh, not usually ever appearing unless, you know, the Tyranids have completely destroyed a planet. So, you know, this is different. And you can see there where it talks about the biomass that the Tyranids destroy everything they come into contact with. You know, once they take over a planet, their job is to infest the planet take out all of its biomass and you know just basically drain life from it completely um, and then move on to another one i guess hello devil dog how you doing good to see you all right guys well we're going to be uh, ending the stream here uh i want to thank everybody for showing up i want to thank uh, bart for moderating and also for just providing so much great information to you guys once again we have a couple minutes here so if you have any questions that you uh would like to you know ask now is definitely the time uh once again i am agrippa maxenius you can find me on www.youtube.com slash agrippa maxenius same for twitch tv same exact name pretty much uh and yeah i'm, I'm really liking this faction i can't wait to take him out on multiplayer on the 15th. I think you guys have a little bit to worry about here. I'm, I'm really enjoying just the ferocity of these Tyranids uh, and just their, their disgusting nature. Look at this, it's wonderful. Now hopefully in a perfect world, we're gonna have this biomass spread across the entire map. 
Uh, and we didn't even complete the second quest, which would require us to, uh, of course, unlock this unit and bring him back. I really, really am curious to see what the quest line of the Tyranids is going to be like. Because keep in mind, these guys are not going to have a basic quest line. That's just not the way it's going to work. These are, you know, just basic organisms. They're, I, I don't want to say they're intelligent. They clearly have the ability to evolve incredible um, adaptations. But, you know, their quest is going to be a little, a little different. Uh, than the other quests, let's say. Thank you so much, Bart. Very kind of you, my friend. No worries, Jora Niner. No worries, Snade Pixel. Always good to see you. Agrippa Tube says Pixel. <laughs> Agrippa Tube. I think what I mean is like, uh, for instance, Altro, the, there's a difference between intelligence, like a human intelligence, and a hive mind intelligence. And obviously, with a hive mind intelligence, one of the main benefits is the fact that these creatures, if you tell them to attack and they're close to the hive mind, they are going to attack the enemy. They're going to kill. That's it. The only thing, their focus and, and their concern is the collective there, the, 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 basically the survival of the entire species. And that's one of the things that I think makes these such a dangerous opponent to face on the battlefield. Thank you so much, my friends. I'll catch you on the next one. This is Agrippa signing out.